Hi, this is Carrie Ann Reed Brown, and this is Carry On Friends, the Caribbean American podcast. American born, Caribbean raised. Why men are just said Caribbean American? Well, that's because for some people, the answer is easy how they identify, but how other people tell them to identify, that's a whole different story. So, as what's becoming my norm, here's a little story from Nicole. So both my parents are Jamaican and both my sisters were born in Jamaica. And for some reason, my mom and her hot self had to go to California. She was already pregnant when she left Jamaica and she was in California with my grandmother and she had me there. And then she took me back to Jamaica and then she had my little sister and her, my dad got married and, you know, we stayed there for a little while and then um, we moved here, but I was the only one that could go with her because I was a citizen. So, um, you know, I came to this country, whatever, and I was young because I was like five. So I grew up here, but I've always loved my heritage and my culture because it's who I am. You know, my parents raised me in a Jamaican household, not an American household. Yes, I went to an American school. I had American friends. And I also had Jamaican friends because, you know, when people come from a Caribbean country or any other country, they tend to kind of find their people. And then, you know, they congregate. So we used we used to go to the babysitter and she was Jamaican and her, her you know, to all her kids. And we used to hang out with them. And that's how we grew up. So now, you know, I'll meet certain people and it's not even so much in my family because I don't really have too many people in my family who will say to me, oh, you're not Jamaican. You know, it's other ignorant people that really piss me off because it's just such an ignorant statement. I was in Jamaica for carnival with my husband and we went out with his friend and his new girlfriend. I don't know what they were talking about, but the guy started saying these stupid comments, you know, because he knows that that stuff pushes my buttons. So all of a sudden now he's started to bring up how Jamaican am I, you know, like what is what is this conversation? So then she says, oh, you were born here. And I said, no, I wasn't born here. I was born in the States, but my parents are Jamaican. She said, oh, well, then you're not Jamaican. So I said, excuse me. I was like, no, boo, you're wrong. So I said, people like you come out with this foolishness telling somebody else what they are. It makes no sense. How are you telling somebody that they're not a part of a culture that their parents birthed them into? Like, you make no sense. You know, yes, I'm not going to, my patois is not going to sound like your patois because you grew here. You live here all your life. So it's going to be different, right? And I'm, you're going to know things about certain products and things that you use because you live here and you grow here. Yeah, that's true. But that doesn't make it any different as from a cultural perspective, what we share, you know, we know about the food, we know about certain sayings, we know about the same things about our culture on a whole, you know? So it just really pisses me off when people go in with that type of attitude. And I find that it's mostly in our community, Black people on a whole, and then, you know, the Caribbean people. Today on the podcast, I have Eva of SokaMom.com, who's of Trinidadian heritage, Alicia of Rewind and Come Again of Guyanese heritage, and last but definitely not least, Tracy, who is of Jamaican heritage and the author of a book I recently read from Yod. So can I get some reactions to that clip you just heard? Tracy, let's start with you. That clip has like been the, the center point of my life. I have been told on so many occasions, despite the fact that both of my parents are from Jamaica, and I grew up in a Jamaican household. I really didn't eat American food until senior high school, but told all the time, you are not Jamaican. Matter of fact, I've always been called Yankee, right? 
<laughs> Even some of my coworkers are Jamaican. They kind of poke fun at me a little bit and they'll call me Yankee. But nevertheless, I'm like, geez, I mean, yes, I was born in the United States, but I don't have any ties here. All my ties are in Jamaica. And if I really want to add another layer, I'll have ties in England because that's where some of my cousins were born. Some of my cousins were born in Holland. Some of my cousins were born in Toronto, Canada. But I really don't have ties to the United States outside of me being born in Brooklyn. And it's just been this lifelong thing of me riding this fine line between, okay, you're American, but you have Jamaican heritage. And since I wrote the book and, you know, things have been um, progressing well for this story, all of a sudden is, okay, now it's, you're of Jamaican heritage, you're Jamaican, Tracy. But I'm like, but wait, you, you guys just said. <laughs> you you know like, what you've yeah, said, though, I think is a symptom. It's okay to call yourself Jamaican American, Trinidadian American, Guyanese American, or any right. other American. Once you get famous, they will claim you. Mm. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, totally. Totally. Um, and I'm seeing that a lot more often and the funny thing is and I'm, i'll keep it very short i have um some really good uh some friends some girlfriends who were born here but their uh parents are cuban they consider themselves cuban yeah they don't consider themselves american they consider themselves cuban and i said why do you consider yourselves cuban they're like well duh tracy both of my parents are from there and all my family I was just born here. So it's like, okay, but if I tell a Jamaican, hey, I'm Jamaican, I'll say, well, what part of the island you were born yes. in? I was like, well, you know, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, but my parents, oh, you're, 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 you're a Yankee. You're not Jamaican. You're of heritage, you know? So it's like this back and forth tennis game. <laughs> well, let me, let me get Elisa and Eva's reaction. Well, this sounded very familiar to me. I mean, I grew up, my brother and I were um, the first generation um, in our family born here in the States, and we grew up with everyone telling us we're Yankees, right? right? So mm -hmm. our, our household was Guyanese, but we were very, as we grew, we were very steeped in American culture. So we're very half and half. And a lot of things of Guyanese culture, we didn't like or were really, really deep in. So that made it even worse. And the, I think the fact that we would jump back and forth in our speech and in, in what we liked and in what we took to really offended um, our native Guyanese family and, and native Guyanese people. And they're like, well, if you're not born there or at the very least, don't claim all of it or can't, you know, you can't tell me about this street and this town and then, then you can't claim any of it. And for me, it's like, I claim all of it. <laughs> you know, I claim all of it. You can't tell me what my heritage is, right? I, what, and to me, heritage and identity is more than just where you're born that's just one facet mm -hmm. it's where you grew it's what you identify with it's a, it's a it's a it's a complex multifaceted multi-layered thing so when people get so simplistic simplistic just to be like well if you weren't born here then you're not of here it's it's more than that for me and for many people it's more than that and you can't tell me what it is yeah so i claim both i'm american and i'm guyanese right eva um, one of the things that I noticed with people who would say that to me, and it doesn't happen very often, but when someone says that to me, it's usually in the context that I get a privilege that they are not getting, mm -hmm. that I have the privilege of having a wonderful, rich Trinidadian heritage behind me, as well as all of the perks that come with being an American and having an American mm -hmm. passport. And mm -hmm. it doesn't feel fair that mm -hmm. you can, that you basically get everything. So I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, just straight out call it a jealousy thing, but it's kind of like, why do you get everything? Why can mm -hmm. you wave this flag and, you know, claim all, you know, the music and the food and the culture and this, that, and the third, but you also have this very valuable American passport. So, you know, I, I, I get it. Um, but like, you guys said, you can't tell me who I am and what I get to be. You know what I'm saying? So, and then also, it's so true. When you do something amazing, <laughs> all of a sudden, the American part just disappears. Like, it had nothing to do <laughs> with it's anything. Right. Like, <laughs> right. it, it, it's as if it never happened. And I'm like, but just yesterday, mm -hmm. I was, you know, just, okay, I'll, I'll take it. But yeah. 
I don't need them to validate who I am and my heritage based on my accomplishment. I'm going to validate that myself based on my upbringing and what my values are. You know what? Let me ask you a question because you, um, Tracy brought up her Cuban friends. I seem to think that I don't think Haitian Americans deal with it. Once they're born of Haitian parents, they're Haitian. I don't oh, think okay. people from the Dominican Republic who are born here, they, they're like, no, you're not Dominican, you know? So is it something that's very specific to the English speaking Caribbean, particularly, you know, Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, Barbie? I, I don't know. I feel like though, you know, Haitians, definitely Puerto Ricans, definitely Dominican Republic or any don't, don't deal with this if they're of, if they're born here. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I, oh, I think it depends on how easy you can assimilate. Mm -hmm. Like it only takes one generation for me to sound like somebody who had many, many generations living here. Mm -hmm. Right. So for someone who is going up in a household where they speak French, you know, it's going to be, and you're coming to the U S you're going to hold on to way more of it through the language than mm -hmm. I would. Mm -hmm. So when you listen, like my dad used to record us when we were younger and you listen to tapes of me as a kid and I have a very strong accent, but that thing disappeared over time. But if I'm growing up in a house where they speak French, it's not going to leave as mm -hmm. quickly. If I'm growing up in a house where they speak Spanish, it's not going to leave as quickly. So that I can understand. Yeah. yeah. Tracy, you were going to say something? Yes, that is so true. I also have um, Haitian friends as well who were born in New York, born in Brooklyn, and they still still speak Creole. And they don't they don't have that. OK, American versus, uh, you know, Haitian. They fully identify with being Haitian. And that's it. That's the end of the story. Close book. End of discussion. Yeah. No one's so, running them down saying you're not Haitian. You're American. No one is running them down, even though they were born here in the States and either one or both parents were born in Haiti. They still speak the Creole very fluently. And it's that's it. I'm Haitian. Done. Yeah, so I, I think Eva just brought up an interesting point that maybe it's because with Haitians, Puerto Ricans, people from the DR, they have an additional language that mm -hmm. gives them that extra, like no one's going to say you aren't because there's a second language spoken in the household. And so it's, you know, for us from the English speaking Caribbean, you know, we code switch, where, whereas, you, you know, and, and over time, you know, and Eva, we're going to have this conversation at the time. E over time, people are going to say, well, you don't sound Jamaican, Jamaican, because your <laughs> accent has kind of neutralized <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, let me let me ask, does anyone kind of understand the perspective, other than what Eva said, the perspective of why someone would say that you are, you shouldn't call yourself a Jamaican, you're just American? Because in the clip, um, and that was from Nicole, She's not saying that I understand your struggle. I don't, I, I understand your daily life, but the inherently the culture, the way that her parents raise her are similar. So she's not going to pretend that, yeah, I know what it's like to live in this part of Jamaica. That's not what you're saying. So any thoughts as to more insights other than the privilege of having an American passport, why people hold this view? And do you find it's a mix of people living on the island who had this view? Because in this particular instance with Nicole, she was having this conversation with someone who lives in Jamaica. Is it also the opinion of people who are born in Jamaica but are living here that once you're born here, you're just straight Yankee? Yeah, I think um, people are really protective of their heritage and culture in the Caribbean. We've been exploited in so many different ways. Our culture has been uh, taken and morphed and, and has been the basis of so many um, cultural um, innovations and explorations without giving back uh, due credit or without us um, uh, benefiting mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, you know, for a quick example, Tropical House, <laughs> right, which mm -hmm. is really reggae music um, or dancehall music, you know, spun and, and, but, you know, record companies over here are really um, profiting, but the originators of the art form are not. Um, so I think there's a thing, you know, people are really protective about their culture. And um, so I can understand it. I, I, I see why, you know, people appoint themselves gatekeepers and, and mm -hmm. say, who, 
who who is and who isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but you you do yourself a disservice um, when you're so, especially just sometimes it's just so condescending, so closed minded, um, and shutting off a, a vein that could be feeding the country. You know, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it really just shuts off a necessary artery that could be people giving back and helping to uplift the culture and and expose it to in new ways and and helping to benefit so I get where it comes from but you know I'm not out here if I'm not out here representing in a negative fashion that um, seeks to to gain from the culture without giving back then I don't understand why you're shutting me down I fully and completely agree that was so beautifully said that's all I got that's that's all I just wanted to say (laughs) that was great yeah because I feel because you know I was born in Jamaica and I want my kids to consider themselves Jamaican Americans, right? You're born Jamaican, you know? And I I want that because also from a cultural preservation in the U S when, when you look around Brooklyn and people think about Flatbush and Utica, those neighborhoods don't reflect the culture that Alicia, you and I from Brooklyn. And I don't know how long you lived in Brooklyn, Tracy, before you moved, they, 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 the cultural stronghold. So who else is going to continue to grow the culture, right? Right. But it's, it's Mm -hmm. the next generation. So if we're telling them they aren't, then over time, what happens to the growth of the culture by Mm -hmm. those who live here? And Mm -hmm. that is kind of what my concerns are. Like, you know, I, I enjoy seeing my son dance into ding dong. I, I, you know, the other day the kids were in the car and they were, they were mocking me. They were like, Auntie Carrie, have road rage. When the man beat the horn, they said, Auntie Carrie said, don't talk me. You know, like, I laugh. You know, I mean, the difference is, yeah. Yes. Let me tell you, I need to let them do a podcast episode because they all going in, you know, but, you know, back if, if it were our parents, they, they would, first of all, get reprimanded. You wouldn't even think of mocking them. But I was happy to hear them attempt doing the patsa the way I do it. And I just laugh. So I want them to be able to be part of the culture, the language, the food, and be able to, to, to identify because a lot of how they grew up in the house is very Jamaican. You know, so I, I keep telling the story when my husband, you know, when I first met my husband and he was helping my daughter with the homework. And he asked my daughter, where's the mats? And my daughter looked at him like, what are you talking about? And I have to say, babe, it is math. It's not mats over here, okay? (laughs) But now, now, yes, you know, or, you know, just like very little things. But I was appreciative because I've lost that reference because I've lived here more than I've lived in Jamaica. So it, it just kind of brought back memories. So now my daughter tells that story because she now knows what mats is and sticking plaster because Jamaicans don't call band-aid band-aid. They call it sticking plaster for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's allowing the kids. I enjoy seeing my kids enjoying the culture, the parts that they do get to understand and the, the parts they do enjoy. And I'm like, why take that from someone because they weren't born in on the island itself? And, and that's kind of where my thing is preservation yeah. of the culture. Mm-hmm. All right. So Tracy, let's jump to you a little bit from Yad. I don't want you to give away the book, but I enjoyed it because I've always wanted to have this discussion about, you know, like introduce yourself. You're like, Hey, I'm Jamaican. Which part of Jamaica you're from? Um, I was born here. My parents are Mandeville. Then you're not Jamaican. And you have a conversation with some people. It's like, Hey, I'm American, but my parents are Jamaican. Then you're Jamaican. I think a lot of us deal with those two sets of conversations. So in this book from Yad, like what was the inspiration behind it? The inspiration behind this story, I wanted to, I wanted it to be a conversation piece. I wanted to highlight a young lady who grew up with Jamaican parents, with the quintessential Jamaican mother, right? A little bit overbearing, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit loving, a little bit overbearing, a little bit more overbearing than loving sometimes. But I wanted to highlight her growing up within American culture, succeeding, and then having to deal with okay, I have this culture behind me, but I want to succeed in the inherent culture of the place I was born in, but yet and still I'm living and working and 
um, breathing American culture, but yet and still I have Jamaican culture as my anchor or as the anchor and um, how to progress between those two lines, between these two dominant cultures, not only in family life, but in friendship and also on the job. And I felt like that story had to be told. So I'm like, okay, well, let me put together this fictional character and put, to put the theme behind it with some very important pieces within that story to spark conversation. Let's talk about it. Right. Let's talk about what it means to have uh, Jamaican parents, but yet and still you live and work in the United States and United States. And there are certain expectations placed over you and not to give away the story. But, you know, you want to you, you, you live and breathe Jamaican culture. But yet on any at, at any point in time, you are told that you are a Yankee. That you are you you are reminded that you are not born on the island proper. So it's but wait, I've been living and breathing this culture all my life, and I love it. But at any moment, I'm told you weren't born on island. You're not Jamaican. What are you doing? So I I wanted to bring that to the forefront for conversation. Um, there's one theme in the book that I found very interesting, and I want to ask Eva and Alicia. Um, that theme was responsibility, right? I, I felt like the character, and not trying to give away too much of it, there was this, this <laughs> even though you were born here, there's a certain level of responsibility that the character was expected of to her culture, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know, Eva, Alicia, I don't know if any of you had had experiences where, you know, there's a responsibility of, you know, like Jamaican parents, a lot of times, some, not all, and maybe not so much now have a responsibility of going back home or mm -hmm. doing something for back home. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, Alicia, Eva, if you've had any of those um, conversations, you, you know of anyone who's had those experiences, I'm trying to get your thoughts on that. Um, not so much my family, like my immediate family, because they spread out. Um, my mom came to the U.S. Uh, her her mother and sister went to England. Um, another brother went to Cyprus. Another one went to Australia. So their responsibilities to each other, you know, and everybody took, had their kids with them. So their responsibilities responsibilities to each other was so spread out that they didn't have that. You know, we have to send a barrel home. We have to do you know those kinds of things. Mm. Um, for my dad's side of the family, you know, it's a little bit different because not no one really left. So, you know, they do have kind of a, a responsibility and a pull and things like that, but not the same as I've seen some of my um some of my friends who they have a twice a year barrel that they send. They go to BJ's or Sam's Club and make sure that they get all of these things when they go home, they go down with three suitcases, come back with a carry-on. Like it's, <laughs> it's very, it's, it's very different depending on the family. And then I think the financial situation of the family, mm -hmm. but um, you are brought up to know that there is a possibility that there might be somebody at home, a family member at home who may need to come live with you at some point, mm -hmm. or, you know, you may need to financially support somebody at some point. I don't think it's like here where you are responsible for your family pretty much and that's it. Yeah. You always have like a little connection that says at any point your card can be pulled and you're going to have to come up with something. Mm. <laughs> that's pretty much it, Alicia. <laughs> but, yeah. but it, go ahead, Alicia. Well, no, I mean, I grew up with, you know, helping my parents pack barrels to send home and, um, you know, when we did go back and visit being like, seeing cousins and like, hey, ain't that my shirt? You know, like, oh, <laughs> so my things had a life after, you know, they would disappear into the barrel. And then I remember just really hitting me like, oh, this is really, people are using our things and we're really, you know, this is not just disappearing into the post. Um, I think as we got older and um, that was each generation, that responsibility has kind of faded a little bit. Um, it doesn't feel so we must think of those who are living back home, if only because so many people have left. We don't have that much family left back in Guyana. Um, and it's more on yourself. So now as an adult, I've felt a responsibility to those who are still there and also to, you know, maybe do something for, even if they're not my family, to do something for the community there. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely grew up with you know, who who's going home. Here, I need you to take this for so and so. Here's an envelope. Here's a package. Here's a what? You, how much room you have in your suitcase and and all of that. Yeah. All right. So as you wrap up, any final words on what it means um, to be Caribbean American, if that and and very specific Jamaican American, Trinidadian American, Guyanese American, and your just any final thoughts on the topic or the discussion as to why this is important in terms of identification, et cetera. Once again, it it, it just means knowing how to traverse between these two ma- between these two massive cultures, and knowing how to stand firm in what you know to be true. And for me, and I can just use myself as an example, all throughout my life, okay, I've had Jamaicans tell me, you're a Yankee, you were born, you know, America, you're American. Okay, so I went to a black college. I went to Florida a and University in, in Tallahassee, Florida. And if anything, that is just the mother of everything black experience in America. Um, you are required to take African two levels of African American history, and you see it every day on the campus. I'm like, okay, wow, this is cool. But you know, I'll even go back to me being in an elementary school. Everybody's grandparents either lived in Georgia, Alabama, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina. I'm like, well, my grandparents are in Jamaica. So, like, what does that mean? Okay. So even growing up now, e- even coming up to this point now. I'm like, wow, you know, I, I embrace, yes, what it means to me, what it means to be black in America, but my roots and my ties are not here. So by culture, by, um, by family, by historical purposes, I am Jamaican because that's where my family is. That's where my family name is. That's where all of my family ties are. It's back on the island. It's not in retro in, in in respect to those who ha- who can trace back um you know grandmothers and great grandmothers and, and grandparents who were slaves in you know Georgia in the southernmost parts of the United States. I can't do that. I have to look at lineage, you know, from the island. So I'm planning a trip to go uh back <laughs> to the island to see, okay, well, you know, how can how can I trace my family history, which I know is yes, it's steeped in the island and it's probably gonna somehow be traced back to uh, England or Europe somewhere, but yet and still, my 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 home, <laughs> my home, my family, my culture is elsewhere. So it's kind of like balancing the two, but yet Lee being able to speak on it at the immediate when someone says, "Okay, well you're a Yankee, yeah, by birth." However, can you call someone who can you call someone Yankee when they're when their grandparents, when they can't trace their family roots here in the United States, what do you say to that? And I, and I've been saying that lately to those who've been calling me Yankee and that shuts the conversation down. Cause it's like, yeah, you do have a point. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And that just shuts it down. It shuts the ignorance level down when someone says, okay, yeah, you're a Yankee. It, it kind of comes off condescending, but when you shut the condescending down with facts, it's, oh yeah, you are Jamaican. You are of Jamaican heritage. Yeah. You, you are one of us. You know, it's very interesting that, um, and then I'll ask Alicia and Eva for final thoughts. It's just very interesting that Italian Americans, Irish Americans don't deal, they're like, if they could trace some great, 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 they're, they're just, they're Italian Americans, Irish Americans. All day. Yeah. Um, Alicia, Eva, any final thoughts? Alicia comes with the poignant one-liners and just dips out. Of <laughs> I mean, I just think, um, for me, what it means to be Guyanese American is to recognize and honor the culture, practice it um, without uh, usurping it. I think that's also a point that a lot of Native Guyanese, a lot of Native Caribbeans are worried about. I'm not, as long as I don't portray myself or try, you know, I always make a point to like, yeah, my parents are Guyanese or, or I'm of Guyanese heritage. I don't ever say I am Guyanese because that's not what, that's not what I am. But um I revel in both sides to my culture. So I just ask that native born Guyanese, native born Caribbean people uh, allow me that and and don't police the culture when I'm only trying to big y'all up. <laughs> you know, I'm only here right. for the benefit of all of us. Um, so yeah, the, to be Guyanese American is, uh, I feel blessed to have, to me, I get the best of both worlds. I get the worst of both worlds. I just have a, such a richer experience 
um, being more than one thing. Um, and uh, I, mean, I feel blessed for it and I just ask that folks respect that. And if you don't, that's your business. I'm still going to claim what I claim. <laughs> Eva? Um, I will say, first, I'm so jealous of people who were born here but raised in Brooklyn and places like that because at least you could walk around the corner and see somebody get a rope, something. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that, the benefit of that. I grew up in the South. And then I went to um, an HBCU where, um, like you said, there's people who can trace their roots back all through Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina. And it's very isolating um, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're, you go in your house and it is a fully Trini house. And then you go outside and you have no one to identify with. Like, it's like you are searching for something, somebody. And mm -hmm. I think that's a basic human need to connect with people in some kind of way. So um, what I would ask is that people who are thinking this way, just try to feel what it's like or to empathize with what it could be like to be alone. And so when I started SoCalMom.com, I wanted to, I didn't want people to feel that way. Mm -hmm. So if you could trace it back to a great grandparent who was from St. Lucia, anything that would help you to hang on, to identify, to feel close to somebody, that is important and that's a valid need. So I would say, you know, don't discount other people's need to connect and to feel included. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful point to end on. Ladies, thank you so much for this conversation. I know it's not going to end. I really want you to check out the book. It's a nice, easy read. I love it. There's one scene in the book that just let me drop the book. I walk off the subway. <laughs> Um, that's re when, when you read it, then you understand because I was just like, oh, and that's how much it grabs me because I, I, I think it's not necessarily a wrong conversation, but there are bigger issues that we need to address mm -hmm. and just kind of putting to bed um, or like um, Alicia said, allowing us to rightfully identify ourselves as Jamaican American. We're not saying we're, we're full grown Jamaican or, or mm -hmm. you know, Guyanese, but allowing us, because like we said, we just, we just trying to amplify and big up the culture and make people know, right. you know, this is the thing. So ladies, thank you so much. Again, we're going to have enough conversations about many topics affecting culture and things. And so until next time, everybody, walk good. You've been listening to Carry On Friends, a show about the Caribbean American experience. We post new episodes on Tuesdays every two weeks. And if you're looking to learn more, buy merchandise, sign up for a newsletter, check out our website, carryonfriends.com. The Carry On Friends podcast is produced by Breadfruit Media. And new episodes are available every other Tuesday morning. You can listen to the podcast on the website, carryonfriends.com, or you can listen on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, or wherever you like to listen to your podcast. Mm -hmm.